everyone good afternoon we have something really special for you today our fresh alt hr introduction video fresh out of the oven so stay tuned uh, to our video if you have any questions about alt hr feel free to pop them in the chat we'll see you in about two and a half minutes Does your company have these problems? Meet AltHR, the super app for companies. AltHR is not your typical HR solution. To start, we designed and tested this with more than 1,500 DG employees. But it doesn't matter what your company size is, you can still use AltHR. If you have existing HR policies, you can easily plug them into AltHR. If not, let us help your company adopt the latest HR practices that we've tested with DG's HR team. Say goodbye to stacks of papers and complex spreadsheets. Say goodbye to manual works and hours spent on administrative tasks. With AltHR, you can easily carry out HR processes with our clean and simple user interface. Easy for your employees, painless for your HR. Perform HR operations such as leave management, expense claims to new hire onboarding. Keep your employees happy and manage their well-being with case management, checklists, and highlights. If that's not enough, we have more. Be it to adapt to the new normal or to enable your teams to be more agile, you can check out our attendance and time tracking module. With AltHR, clock in and clock out by just using a smartphone to have an even simpler digital management of all attendance data. Punch cards? No longer needed. In services, your employees can purchase vouchers, pay their utility bills, mobile reloads, and other essential services from inside AltHR itself. Have you heard of an HR app that does this? Your employees deserve the best. Let us help you with that. Hi everyone, good afternoon again. So we're starting our webinar now. My name is Michelle. I'm the digital marketing lead here at DGX and I will be your host for today's webinar. Before we start, make sure you fill up the form embedded in the QR code or visit the link provided in the description box below so that we can send you our materials after this webinar. Today's webinar is organized in conjunction with MDEX SME Digital Summit and we have a full three days of activities um, lined up for you. And similar to our other webinars, um, today's webinar is also a part of DG's Business Continuity Digitalization Initiative, BCD. A quick introduction again, if you don't know what DGX does, um, DGX is DG's venture building arm, and our focus is to help Malaysian businesses of all sizes solve problems by digitalizing their operations through our solutions, AltHR, the video that you saw just now, Omni Hotline, our virtual phone solution, as well as iFleet, our fleet tracking solution. Before we begin today's session, we have something exciting to share. You would already know about the SME digitalization grant by now, but today, think fast track, think instant approval. I'll leave it hanging there uh, so that you will stay tuned all the way to the end where we'll share more about this new and improved grant application process. Back to today's webinar, we have Sean Ui, Head of Business Development here at DGX, who will be sharing more about the topic, Become a Master in Digitalization with Low to Zero Investments. As you can already read or hear in the title, we will teach you how to become a digitalization master by the end of this webinar. Over to you, Sean. Okay. Hi. 
Uh, very good afternoon to all participants. I'm glad you took the time to join us in our webinar today. So today's topic, I think it's, uh, it's about digitalization, but also how to best approach this and try not to be confused with the misconceptions out there that has made many fear the D word, right? So I'll just go to the next slide. Now, digitalization, is it a big word? So what it used to mean is actually it's just the conversion of text pictures or sound into a digital form that can be processed by a computer. That was what digitalization well, was all about. Now today, it's about using the right digital tools to create better, you name it, communications, management, operation processes, durables, etc. So you're talking about the possibility of using tools today, digitalizing your business, right? in a more modern world, a more advanced world, and definitely a more competitive world. Now, just want to share two examples of uh, organizations that's adopted or embraced or even started out using digital tools. I think everyone is very familiar with this brand. Uh, it has spawned a lot of other brands, also acquired uh, even more. So Alibaba Group itself, a mere 20 years, okay, they are where they are, not because of following traditional methods of working. They actually are one of the first few that embark on a full digitalization scale from the start to the finish, from where you order down to deliverables and tracking and performance, all these areas are also digitalized. And closer to home, we have Grab in a mere eight years, started in 2012, I suppose, in a mere eight years, it's now on every mobile uh, device, whether it's tablet or your phone, where you actually have multiple choices. So these are the clear examples of how companies, regardless of whether you just started up or you're in the middle of a growing or you have become big, digitalization is no longer a one or a choice. It is now for progress and survival a need. So a quick question. I think a lot of people have seen this meme and it was really funny at the, when it started, uh, where the question was who led the digital transformation in the company? So this has been shared numerous times. There was only one answer. It was COVID-19. This also applies very much to DG. We have adopted a lot of digital tools because of uh, COVID-19. Whole MCO, work from home, the new normal, right? So let me go to the next slide. Now, Michelle has spoken a bit on BCD, what business continuity digitalization is all about. So what is BCD? So BCD, as we mentioned, it stands for Business Continuity Digitalization. This is through a collaboration with MDEC. DG created the initiative and we bring about a series of webinar, how to best prepare uh, all our customers or participants to understand why it's important to be ready, right? With digital tools. So just like uh, today's um, session, uh, what we found was in three areas, that has been impacted the most by COVID-19. So I'm sure it resonates to some of you in the areas where productivity is impacted, areas where your organization itself is impacted, including your customers, as well as, well, the bottom line. Now, digitalization is not a very straightforward thing to most people. I think partly because a lot of people don't want to understand uh, how it works. They just want to follow the herd. So a lot of people, when they listen about uh, digitalization, they fear the word more than actually trying to understand it. So to most, it means having to spend more money on technology. It means having to skill up a lot of people, right? Rather than seeing how many options out there that could be easier, that could actually help them save uh, for their business. So to so some who don't know how to start, it becomes complex. Not knowing what to do, where to start the journey, then it becomes an expensive process because the more confused we are, the more expensive we think it will become. Then we have a certain lack of skill, right? The lack of skill in terms of, now, if I adopt digitalization, how would my guys be able to manage it? And then, will it take up a lot of time? So a lot of people are saying that, okay, it might slow down my business. I have to adopt something new. Everyone has to relearn uh, what they do in the process. So this 
has always been uh, the misconceptions of actually going through digitalization. Now, are these questions on your mind? If, you're, if you are not asking yourself these questions, uh, believe me, your competitors are. So today, more and more people are looking into ways to improve the processes and basically going to market faster, delivering to customers faster, and then getting revenue faster. So these are a few of the questions that should already be asked in your organization. Now, after having said that, on the previous slides, we talked about the kind of misconceptions and the kind of uh, complexity and the kind of time you take. So I want to slowly um, guide you towards how we look at digitalization in BG or even in my team. First, we normally want to solve one problem at a time, or maybe two if you're ambitious, but we normally choose the problem that has the highest impact and the easiest to implement to solve it. Then we also do the math because we normally look for a tool that would help us um, to see whether or not the processes can be improved to either save money or save in productivity hours or engage people better. It is true that it is more expensive if you don't digitalize and still continue doing the things uh, that you do in a more traditional way because the rest of the world is not going to wait. So you need to look at your team, giving ownership, giving empowerment to the existing employees that you have, uh, not, ne not needing to train them up per se. Many tools out there are very intuitive, very straightforward to use where you can actually give them the ability to own up. Lastly, the long-term gains. When you embark in this particular digitalization journey, you would see more often than not the value it brings to just doing things uh, in a status quo manner, all right, in a manual manner for that matter. So now every business share the same common layers that can be how should I say addressed with the right digital tools? I'm sorry, the thing keeps popping up. So there are three very easily identified areas, uh, which is quite common to most organizations anyway. So which are the areas that digitalization can help? One is communications, whether it's an internal communications or it's external communications. Nowadays, you have your usual chats. Uh, a lot of people use WhatsApp. Uh, you have your calls, you have video calls right now. You have social media platforms. So the communication tools that you use today, besides just the phone, now has evolved into a lot more. Then you have internal operations. So getting the message or task from point A to C to D, then to Z, right? These are all a part of the need to digitalize. Why? Because you will have the ability to track timelines and accountability automatically. Then lastly, you're talking about people people and culture, whether it's uh, internal or external, you need to have better people engagement in the new normal. You need to share uh, things like company direction. You need to get everyone aligned to objective. And lastly, you need to empower the people to be able to adopt digitalization. Now, when we assess digital tools, this is what we normally look for, okay? This is normally what we look for. Uh, first, we look at the kind of impact it has to business, right? Is it going to impact my business? In which area is going to impact my business? So is the tool going to be something that will solve a problem I've identified or fill up a gap that basically I'm lacking today? And lastly, once that is adopted, you look at the opportunities where the tool can actually help maybe create or protect your revenue that you have, right? It's all about growth. Now, the key takeaway from this is that you are only allowed to experiment on digital tools if you know what you want or if you have uh, a problem that you want to properly address or you have identified it with the team, you understand what you need and then you start from there. That would be one of the first few steps that you take when you're looking for a digital tool. So what are the tools available today? Now, this is the low to zero investment kind of webinar, right? There's a, there's a reason for it, right? It's not all free, uh, but this is something that we normally like to share. Sorry. So you have something where there are three kinds of tools available in the market. You have what we call the freemium, 
I'm going to use the analogy of owning a vehicle as uh, one of the first few to talk about the tools that is available. One is a freemium. Freemium is like you don't own a car, but you can still get to your destination. So there's basically no uh, upfront payment, no commitment. You just have to use a service, right? And then uh, if you can get to the, lo uh, the location you want, why not? So that's a freemium. But then with freemium, what actually comes is the kind of tool that you would normally use for free in a short period of time. And then you will see a lot of uh, things you need to add on as you grow. So some business grow because they have certain things that need customized. Some uh, basically add on features as the organization grow. Or if some are really just using it for free, take note. There is a very dangerous uh, area that you're walking into because on a free platform, normally it gets sidelined and there's no more updates or no more improvement in the future. And if your business relies on it, it's a dangerous thing to do, right? Next, you actually have the more affordable ones, right? You own a car, you pay for uh, the commitment, but you can get to use it as and when you want to use it, right? It gets the job done. So some of the affordable ones that you have, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg, not like the, the, the big names out there, but it actually helps you grow from something that you were using for free, then add on to something you have to pay a certain amount to continue to use that particular product. So some of the affordable ones out there cost less than 100 ringgit a month to use, some less than 50 ringgit per user to use. It's something that could help automate certain processes, communicate better, uh, reach out to customers better, something you can consider. Lastly, the premium. This is what we call the Rolls Royce. Owning a car is not enough. You want to spend a lot of money owning something that is handmade, uh, customized, fully to your taste and value. So these are all high brand, high expectation, high cost on the premium items. But not all premiums are really expensive. Some premiums just come because it's a, it's a good ad as you grow. Right, so the more affordable options, the premium options are a lot of. Uh, it's where actually a lot of customers evolve to. Right, if today you want to start digitalization, my advice is go after things that is either pre, uh, premium or affordable, use it, test it, experiment, and then grow from there. Right, see which two work, and then just grow from there. Now, I'm going to share with you something that DG or DGX uses uh, quite a bit. Uh, we have been using tools for a long, long time. Right? We've been adding and growing some of the tools. So today, I won't go into details of each tool that we use, but I would just like to share where each uh, plays its role. So even in DGX, we are very prudent in terms of investing our time and money. We have a very tight budget, right? We use premium tools as well because it's just good business sense. So before we go into uh, deeper, like any other business, we wanted to know what is out there and what works best for us. We adopted a tool called Slack, right? This is for our communications. Essentially, um, it is uh, communications between uh, teams, uh, divisions, and then we grew to understand even more of its feature. It started as a freemium. Now we are paying for the additional features that we have, but it helps automate a lot of uh, work for us in terms of um, the features that we have, right? As one of it is actually communicating with other applications as well, just like the one I'm showing next, which is Asana. So Asana is also another project tool that we were using at the start, and we evolved into something called Basecamp today. So it's all about whether or not the tool can grow with you as you go along, or you find something better that you can replace. So this, when we started out as freemium, now we have turned it a lot into uh, paid tools. Now, let's talk about some affordable tools. This, I would like to spend a little bit of time because uh, it's no secret that we own both of these tools, right? I would like to introduce to you uh, something that is affordable uh, and both Omni and all HR belongs to DG. And this is the few digital tools out there that's also part of the eligible solutions for the SME grants. Now, the grant itself, okay, we will explain more once I've completed my presentation, Michelle will take uh, over that particular discussion in terms of the grant. Now for the tools, Omni is a virtual PABX. 
if you guys are not familiar with virtual PAVX, basically it means that you can have a almost like office system without the need of investing into hardware. So it can set up a very professional front desk for you, give you a virtual landline, and then you can basically behave like a very established environment, right? Uh, we also have um, customers that requires it because they've been running on using the mobile for the, the, the business for the longest time. And they would like a 030408 number to basically uh, di 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 divert most of the calls, divert most of the calls to a proper landline office number that they have. So the most important thing for us is when we were working from home, a lot of the new normals is uh, you have work from home, work from office, we need to track a lot of calls, especially customers' calls. Uh, how are we going to do that? The tool, the Omni uh, Digital Tool also comes with every single call track, every single missed call track, and how, whether or not we respond to it. So this is actually tracking productivity as well for the team who's managing either in sales or customer service. Okay, the next tool actually that we have is actually all HR. Now all HR is our HR app that allows functions to be given back to the employees to empower them basically to choose everything they want to do on the go. So a, a few modules I would like to share would be things like claims, right? If you're still doing your claims, uh, you spend one whole day sitting down there, just writing down your claims, sticking in your paper. That's what we used to do. Right now, you're basically doing claims on the go. I get in the car, I take a picture of the receipt, I key in what I need to, click, it's sent for approval. So that is one of the few uh, modules that we have. We have travel request approval, it's done easy. We have announcement where everybody, if you can see down here, Everybody can be informed if there are any changes in HQ, any changes in terms of uh, the COVID-19 situation, or you know, directly any message you want to get across to your whole team. So all HR is an app. Omni is the app that we both carry, right? That is also eligible for your grant. So if you want to know more, just reach out to us for this. So this is actually used widely in uh, DG as well. The next week is premium. So there are a lot of premium uh, options out there. I'm sure you know uh, a lot of the paid for apps, paid for tools, right? But DG has always been adopting tools for many years. So digitalization, as I, I, I mentioned earlier, it's no longer a one or a choice. Digitalization right now is a need. So we have embarked on digitalization for a long, long time. And we have also invested constantly because we use the tools that we have, whether it's things like Salesforce or, or Office 365, uh, Google Suite, right? We use it because it helps us serve our customers better, improve people and processes further, right? It's only natural for us that we are big users of this because of the sheer size of our company, as well as the flexibility in terms of the kind of tools that we have to make, right? So this is what helps us achieve more in the organization. Now, we have the three tools shared. So in a nutshell, we have digital tools in place in different layers of the business. So as you can see here, we basically break the thing down, just like for communications. Now we have better communications, right? We have more automated operations using Slack, Kimpio, uh, as well as Basecamp. We have happier people using HR tools, right? Now, I would like to share something uh, with you in terms of why digitalization is important in a very, I suppose, a very important discussion uh, today, where a lot of people are starting to send their children to a private education industry, right? So here is something that happened to me. So it's, I, can re I can relate because number one, I'm a working parent. Uh, time is a luxury. I still do what I can for my child. Uh, only that I can do it on weekends. So during the weekends, normally I do a research I was finding a new school uh, and then I found some good reviews and then I made my call Then I shortlisted three of them. I picked three, cool, uh, three schools. I called two uh, on a weekend, a Saturday afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, both didn't answer. So I tried the last one. The wise principal picked up because she was marking papers on a weekend. So it was an additional day for her. So she picked up, she explained everything. I asked the right questions. I went in for a visit and then Immediately, she closed the deal. So in terms of 
how the problems that we see in a simple organization like a private education sec uh, sector, right? You have parents who work and wants to actually communicate only after hours. But when they call, there's nothing to trace. Right? That is a missed call to a landline that cannot have any trace uh, number. Secondly is, they, most of them operate five days a week. I'm not expecting to do more, but if they had a system in place, then even weekend calls can be handled. Whether it's a safe call, so you can get back to them on a weekday, that is something that is a precaution. Right? And then we have, even if you have a receptionist sometimes, unresponsive to calls. She may be busy, not around the desk, and then again, the call is missed. How much do you think each missed call in a private education industry is going to impact? Very simple. A single year's fee is 20000 When you send your child in, it's going to be about 6 to 12 years, depending on the size of the, 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 the education, um, I suppose, the base you're going to send them to. right? But that's millions worth of dollars or ringgit uh, missed just by one opportunity. So what happened was, right now, if you had a system like Omni in place, you call the landline number, no one picks up, the IVR system picks it up, uh, either you have people in place for weekends to pick up sales calls, or you can actually uh, communicate back to them on a weekday. This is something you can do. So no missed opportunities for any business then is impacted. Right? Next. On all HR, again, uh, a tool that we proudly uh, uh, developed and built. Uh, and it is now helping not just DG and also a lot of customers out there that wants to be more than just uh, you know, uh, running normal HR operation or getting just a HRMS system to work. So this is one of the few benefits uh, that you have. In uh, all HR, you have more than 10 modules. Each module gives you a different functionality if you want, right? And each functionality itself can take different segments of the business and improve them. So one of it is, uh, like I said, we have a digital sales kit uh, module where you can actually put a lot of your products, your materials in, where each employee can then share out through either social media, your WhatsApp. It's, it's almost like a digital brochure that everyone can use and it's easily accessible because of the app, right? Then you have the, the usual time tracking where you want to track productivity. They can, uh, in a very mobile environment, check in, check out. You can even put in geofence if you want. You have services that we added into uh, all HR where you can reload, pay personal bills to minimize your risk of traveling to a location, especially with the current situation as it is, to protect your employees. So it's definitely more than just a HR app. Now, here's the other incentive. This app is free until the end of the year. So download it, use it, okay, set it up, and then make sure that before the end of the year, give some feedback, and if you don't like it, just remove it from the, the, your mobile device. But it is free until the end of the year. You can go ahead and use it. You want to know more, please reach out to us on this. Now, in closing, there's a, just a few uh, things I would like to reiterate here, uh, just like the previous slide I shared. Going digitalization is not difficult. Solving one problem at a time, finding the highest impact uh, one first, do a little bit of research, then experiment on some of the tools. If you don't believe in digitalization, do a bit of math, how it actually can come up to it being more expensive to not digitalize, right? Again, look at your team. I'm sure most are already savvy with downloading apps from iOS or you know, Play Store. So they, they know exactly what to do if it is an app. It is something that they can do with a mobile device or even the tablets, right? And in the long-term gains that you see, you will ask yourself a very simple question. Why didn't I do this sooner, right? So with that, I would like to uh, just pass you to my colleague, Michelle, because at this point, this will be very interesting to a lot of you because of the uh, previous uh, teaser that Michelle set up, this fast track, this uh, quick qualification, uh, and using the grant to help you digitalize your business. So with that, Michelle. Great. Thank you very much, Sean, for your insightful session. Uh, we hope you managed to learn more about some of the tools that you can use to get started on your digitalization journey. We understand that it can be overwhelming considering there are probably thousands of tools today um, and all of them claiming to be the best at what they do. We don't doubt that they are the best, 
but we have been in your shoes, overwhelmed with very little resources to get us started. So we are glad that we've been able to share with you some of our findings uh, after our trials and errors in the last couple of years. So like Sean mentioned, before we move on to our Q&A session, uh, we'll do a quick introduction of the teaser that I shared earlier in this webinar, um, the SME Digitalization Grant. Great. There we go. So to start um, a bit about the grant information, this is still the same as before, mostly. But as a quick recap, one, what is this grant about? It's a matching grant of 50% um, discount or up to 5,000 ringgit. So assuming that your invoice for your digital solution that you buy is 10,000 ringgit, you can get 5,000 ringgit as the grant. If it is 11,000 ringgit, you will still get 5,000. So it's 50% up to 5,000 ringgit. So that's still the same. But for us, um, this new and improved digitalization grant is offered by DG for DG Solutions and it's only for the first 500 companies that register with us. So that's the slight difference um, for this grant with us compared to what you've heard before in our previous webinars. The eligibility criteria is still exactly the same. So one, ownership, 60% Malaysian owned. Two, your company has to be registered in Malaysia, so it can't be registered in another country and the HQ is in Malaysia. It has to be registered in Malaysia and you have to have been operating for at least one year before you can apply for the grant. And as usual, the annual um, sales turnover, if you are one to two years old, minimum of 100,000 um, for the year. And if you are more than two years old, 50,000 for the last two years. So this is the criteria. What is the new application process? So one, as usual, you still have to register your interest with us. So let's take Alt HR as an example. You can go to our new website, althr.my slash panjana slash grant, register on the simple form. The next thing we'll do is to call you to just understand that you've qualified for all the criteria as the slide before, the four criteria. We'll send you a declaration form. The declaration form uh, will also consist of a list of documents that you have to submit to us. Once you submitted that to us, we consider that okay once we check your documents and you will be approved to start using our solution. So there's no longer a, let's say, 15 to 20 working days turnaround time for any approvals, um, any money collection from any other um, banks as we will get that sorted for you with the bank Simpana National. Um, we will sort out the remaining 50% with the bank and then we will invoice you for the remainder of the 50% and you can start using the solution immediately. As Sean mentioned, um, Alt HR has an offer right now. We have an offer still on top of the grant. So what that means is that if you sign up uh, with Alt HR today under the grant and if you are approved, um, you get 50% off um, your 12 month subscription and that comes to 750, 7 ringgit and 50 cents per employee per month. And then from then onwards, any months or any days that you have left for the remainder of 2021 will be free. So if you sign up now, you have from August 2021 to December 20, 2021 free. So make sure you sign up. If you don't really know what this is all about, feel free to visit our website. There's a lot of information there for you to understand more. So it's not just Alt HR that is available for the grant. As Sean has mentioned, Omni Hotline, our virtual office phone system, is also eligible. We have some plans there for you to check out. They are very affordable for SMEs. On top of that, our fleet tracking solution, which was not eligible for the grant before this, is also eligible now. So if you also have a fleet, um, you have commercial vehicles that you'd like to track, you also have a video solution and Wi-Fi solution. If you're interested in those, feel free to email us at hello at allhr.my. Um, it's all HR, but don't worry, we can answer any questions you have for any of the solutions that we have. So that is all on the grant. Um, we will go back now to the Q&A session. Great, so bringing back Sean, we have a lot of questions from our guests, our participants today. Um, okay. So okay. we just give you a bit more time, like maybe 10 to 15 seconds to uh, put in any of your questions in the chat and then we'll pick them in a bit while Sean can get some water if you need to. Thank you. If you haven't already, make sure you check in. I know a lot of people would like the slides to know what the sort of tools that we use here at DG and DGX. So if you want to get the sales materials after this, if you want to get our BCD or digital readiness tool checklist, um, please 
fill up the form in the description box so that we can send that over to you as well. Great, let me just look at the questions. Perfect, let's get started. So our first question is by Idris A. And the question is, what are the advantages of using Slack or Teams when I already use WhatsApp? Sean, would you like to take that question? Sure. I think um, what you need if you use a work tool, then you honestly use a work tool for work. The problem with, I, I won't say it's a problem. I think the flexibility or the, for, for WhatsApp is you, you tend to mix personal and work together too much. So when you have certain things that's important, like tracking of a project, complications of, or, or a project, you, you tend to have too many rooms or too many chats within WhatsApp. Right? Again, it's not wrong. A lot of people still use it. But if you want to have some level of uh, a tracking, accountability, history, properly documented in a way, and I mean, using Slack uh, or even Teams right, itself, you know it's a work tool. So you don't mix the, the two. Right? You also wouldn't want a lot of the uh, private uh, communications to be jumbled up with the work communications, where, again, security might be a risk. Right? So, yeah. I find that work using Slack or even Teams makes me feel a little bit more secure when I'm doing uh, more sensitive project works, right? Yeah. Just an additional a commercial plug for Omni. So Omni, as you know, is a virtual landline solution. But did you know that uh, landlines can be used for WhatsApp business? Uh, so if you don't know, now you know, uh, if you want to use WhatsApp business for work purposes, let's say for sales, if you want to use WhatsApp to still communicate with your customers, um, internally you use Slack, that's what we recommend, but externally um, you can sign up for Omni, use that landline number and sign up for WhatsApp business so that you look more professional. <laughs> Great. So our next question is from uh, Rudy. Um, the question is, do you suggest for startups to use a more holistic solution like Teams or ClickUp Etc. or start off with something more standalone like Google Drive, Google Docs. So separately, or should they just think about like the whole suite, business suite already to start with if, if they're a startup? Um, I suppose this, there's no right answer to this question because it's really depending on the, the individual in terms of how you plan, um, the, 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 I suppose how you plan your business moving forward. Right. If you want a very holistic uh, solution, you want piecemeal solutions, you want to try a few experiments while you're growing, it's not wrong to use really uh, the, the offerings, uh, even like I said, between the freemiums and affordable. It's not wrong to use that. But if you're looking at the long term and you have some, uh, you believe or you're advocating a lot in terms of digitalization, I don't think it's wrong to work with a very established uh, solution that you know will carry you between maybe year one down to year 10, right? That's something that you have to decide. I wouldn't say uh, uh, it's, uh, there's a right answer for it. I would just say that in terms of advantage, if you're using a suite, a standalone suite itself, right? Like Google is something we use. We share a lot of information across. We, if we have uh, like a single platform speaking the same language, having the same uh, features, right? and share it across uh, all organization, where then it's easier for us to communicate. That's, that's basically it, yeah. Great, nice. So we have the next question from Azwar. Um, his question is, at what point should I start digitalizing my organization since I only have five employees? Would it be worth the investment? Ah, good question. I always believe that even if you have one and you believe in digitalization that can help you grow, you should already start digitalizing immediately. Why? Because there is no better time than when you are slightly growing or you're, you're starting to grow to adopt it. When you become too big, when you have 30, 40 men, right, you have the question of how many of us can adopt. As opposed to right now, you have this discussion where uh, I want to try something. It's easier to try when you're growing than try when you're already established. Like we, we, we try to change a solution. You have 1,500 to 1,600 people you need to communicate to. It takes a longer process to adopt, right? So my advice, I would say most people would advise, especially now if you have five employees, look at what the market has to offer. Look at the kind of solutions that you have. The three areas we were talking about, whether it's communication with customers, internal, or even your processes. Something to look for. Um, it won't cost you a lot of money. Just start experimenting with it. 
Great. I think that follows up very closely to our next question. I think people generally want to know what's the number of employees they should be at or the size they want to be at before they use a tool. So this next question is from Jofan Pang. If, mm. if I have an employee size of 20, what type of tool should I go for? Premium or affordable? How do I decide? <laughs> okay, I don't. I don't think again. Uh, I don't think it's it's a matter of uh, the right tool. I, I think it's it's really about whether the tool itself fits what you are trying to do. Like again, we address back the step by step, right? You know you have a problem that you need to address. Even at a size of 20, 30, 40, new things evolve, things come in, right? You need to address that. So can the tools you're using today address what you want to do tomorrow? If not, then if it's not a premium tool, then look for something that you need to pay. Most of the time, you will end up needing to pay for something because, like I said, um, living on a, uh, basically walking on a wire where everything is free can be very dangerous because free will end up sidelined and there's no more development. So eventually you have to pay for digitalization. The question is when? It's not so much about the size of the company that you're growing, it's, a, it's how it will impact your business if you don't act on it, as in you don't pay for something that you need, right? It's very much to do with need. Yeah. Great. I think that also answers some of the questions that we have from our audience on whether all HR is free. So yes, it's free right now, but like Sean mentioned, um, at one point, uh, you still have to pay for a solution or you, or you have to pay in other ways. So all HR is free uh, if it's not part of the grant until end of the year. Um, and then you start paying 1st January onwards next year. So it's not free. I'd like to add something on all HR. The reason why we are giving all HR for free is we believe in adoption, experimenting, especially helping a lot of SME understand people should be empowered to use the tools that they have today. When I'm saying tools, it's not the software. The tools is basically the mobile devices they have. To what extent are you utilizing it? Are you utilizing just for calls, messaging, social media, and games? Or do you now want to utilize it as part of an empowerment where employees take responsibility of their identity, their, 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 their function in, within an organization? So by adopting a tool that is given free now, you can choose not to continue in January if you don't want to, but I'm hoping all of you would. But it's something you can take advantage of now. You should do it. Yeah. Great. So I think that those are the questions that we have on like what, how, how big my company should be before I start using a tool. The next one is from someone who has already used the tool. So the question is from Isa, and the question is, if I am already using a tool, but I realize it's not so good, uh, is it a good idea to change? Um, the effort of switching seems to be high. What do you think, Sean? Okay, uh, I think this is again, one of the few misconceptions out there. Now, uh, if you say the switching is high, the effort is in terms of cost or in terms of time. Right, a lot of tools today basically gives. It's just a matter of switching data from one uh, platform to another platform. But we are talking about really you have already integrated into a system. You've been paying something that is like what most banks do. They have legacy system. It's very hard to give up, and that's where it's actually targeted now. Uh, it relates back to where Asba uh, asked the question: Where should I start? I think you should start when you are growing. So you can actually pick and choose and really find the right fit and then grow with the tool. Right? It is a good idea to change if it's already impacting the business badly, whether it's uh, people's usage of it, complaint morale, no point having you know a car that you bought that's very very lovely, very fast, and it's just parked on your garage and it's not being used. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Liking the, the car analogy there. <laughs> okay, great. So the next question is also from Isa. And the question ties closely into using tools um, for digitalization. So a question is about talent. And she asks, what if I can't find any employees internally that are interested in implementing the tools that I picked? Because our one of our suggestions was to look internally, right? So I think her question is, what if no one wants to do that? So I think it's very much uh, what we shared earlier. Whether or not the company is aligned towards digitalization whether the people understand what digitalization is all about. Um, a lot of times when employees internally are not interested uh, to implement certain tools that say an individual pick, is because they don't have a collective understanding of how it will help the business. Is there a bottom line that's impacted? Is there a good process that can be improved? So there was not enough probably research 
and and from there, uh, not enough, uh, I suppose, uh, um, a collective mindset in wanting to do what is right moving forward. Right? There, is, there is no, uh, I, I, I suppose even today, you tell someone not to buy a smartphone and buy the, the old previous uh, device, most of them will say you're crazy, right? They want the best. So it's just about trying to show them that what you pick impacts the business. And that's the only way to, to do it right now. Because, yeah, you're right. Visualization has become some sort like a, uh, you know, like I said, a complex, a very confusing, and, and it, it, does, it does scare away a lot of people. So you just have to understand how it helps the business. Yeah. Great. So I'm just trying to categorize the questions, lots of questions that we have here. So we are still at the part about tools and, and demystifying some of the, the questions that we have, right? Mm. So um, the... The next question is back from, from Azo again. Uh, so his question is, what should I start digitalizing first? Internally, uh, like all HR and Omni that we mentioned, externally, in expanding market reach, marketing reach. So what would your advice be for, for him? Again, um, what we have shared, there are three layers in terms of uh, the business. Right? So, not more than that, but uh, these are the three layers that uh, I was talking about. And uh, whether it's an external, a kind of environment that you still need to keep, especially today, more and more customers need engagement because it is now the new normal. Even they themselves are looking for people who can reach out to them in a more remote manner. Where Omni also addresses both internal, external, uh, uh, I, suppose, I suppose, processes and communications. Right? Now, expanding market marketing reach, uh, if you have the right tools, you are technically expanding it using technology. Without the tools, you are still very much traditionally doing what you're doing today. So I'm going to take Omni, for example. You are actually getting people to call in to make yourself look a little bit more established because of the landline and the virtual receptionist to help you and maybe even extensions to different, different departments. And it's also a way to uh, communicate externally by keeping track of who your team calls, whether there's any missed opportunities, any missed calls that you haven't addressed yet, so these are the few things that you can uh, look at. And I, th I think Aswa's question is more towards, I don't really have a budget, so which do I pick and choose? Now, if I, I would pick picking something that would generate uh, revenue uh, starting on and look for ways in terms of, like I said, OHR is free. Look for ways to also concurrently experiment internally what you want to help your internal staff feel, uh, I suppose, uh, feel more empowered, feel better, feel happier, feel more engaged. So all HR can help with that. As they say, happy employees, happy customers, right? So that's one way to look at it. So there shouldn't be a choice, if you ask me. Just finding the right tool who can address both is something we can do. Great. Yeah. So next question is also about tools, but then that's more internal. I think we, we shared a bit just now, so maybe you can share um, a bit more scenarios or like case studies on some of the tools that we use so this question is from kong the question is one of the key issue is we don't know what tools are available could dgx share with participants all the tools that dg or dgx use as reference okay <laughs> this is going to be like uh, trying to get wikipedia to you know print out everything just on solutions we have experiment uh, on a lot of tools we, we also switch tools pretty quickly when uh, we find things that don't work for us Right? We don't really have, I don't want to use the word loyalty. We don't really have a particular preference of a certain tool that is a must have, a must do, or, or something we can recommend to you that would impact your, your, your business uh, fully. It is very much again coming back to you in terms of where are the areas you want to address in your business. So tools are everywhere, a dime a dozen, right? Tools are, uh, you, you go to Google, you search, and you will see tons of it. I, I, would, I would suggest doing a little bit of research. Um, selecting uh, one, the problem that you want to address. Two, some of the tools that you search out, look at the reviews, how it helps certain companies. Three, just make a call uh, and then just ask them whether they're available in Malaysia and is there a trial period for you to use uh, in terms of starting up using it uh, as a tool. We can be a reference, but we can only do uh, you know so much. We can't really give you the, 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 the whole list. I, I would love to. It's just <laughs> We, we will be too confusing a choice to pick, right? Well, let's, let's give them like three three tools that we use. 
So yes. um, for communications, um, we, we talk a lot about Slack. So we use the paid version for Slack. Yeah. Um, but we're trying to reduce that now because we've moved to a new tool called Basecamp. So that's a new project management tool that we're trying to use to replace um, our meetings, um, replace very real-time reactive uh, responses to things. So that is moving on or graduating from Asana, which we used to use, and Jira as well. So now we use Basecamp, but we cannot tell you what is the best tool to use. So you just have to try it out and figure out if it works for your business. I guess the last one, uh, we can talk about CRM. So we, we've tried plenty. Uh, DG uses Salesforce. Um, we use uh, Fresh Sales. Part of the fresh works um, suite of solutions we yep. also use fresh desk yeah so those are some of the tools that we use if you want to check them out um you can they they all have free trials i think so you can try them out of course uh, you can always use omni and all hr as well <laughs> we Great. Can use that, by the way. yes yeah, we also use our own solutions of course um Great. The next question, I'll just pick out all the non-grant related questions now and then after this we'll tackle all the grant related questions um yep. so there is a general one on, um, do I need a website or there's a Facebook page? Is a web Facebook page enough? Um, is that a good outreach? D do you want to take that or do you want me to answer this? I, I can take my view on it. You, know, you can give me the technical, the te you can support me on the technical side, right? Yeah. So for me, for me is a, a website and a, a FB, unless you spend a lot of money advertising it, right? It's, it's You are hoping for people to come in to click and find out who you are. So it's not so much an external that you are have a, you have a reach out program to get people to, 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 to click on it. You still need to spend a little bit of time, uh, money to get people to be interested in what you set up, right? So if you ask me whether there is a good outreach, it's a good information and an identifier for you, what you do, but it is definitely not a marketing tool where you hope to see customers coming in uh, you know, in, in, in flows and in floods. It's not going to happen that way, right? But it was, it's a definitely a good start, right? Digitalization, having your social media identity, it's important. Whether it's Insta, whether it's uh, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these are important part of the digitalization. Journey. Yeah. And Michelle can share the technical, <laughs> Michelle can share, share the technical side of it. Uh, my, my take is if you are completely new and you just started, like today is day zero of your business, then start with Facebook first because you have no existing customer database. You probably also don't have the budget. You probably don't really know how to set up a website. So that's a good place to just test it out first. Test if your idea works, test if there's a market. Mm -hmm. And if there is from Facebook, and remember that Facebook, you are competing for space with everyone else in the world, not just um, people in your industry, people that are supplementary to your industry, as well as anyone in Malaysia and outside. So just need to be aware of that. But if you have your website, it is completely your real estate. You can put whatever you want there. But at the same time, you also need to find ways to get people to come onto your website. So Facebook can be a channel to bring interested people onto your website. Um, you shouldn't need to pick what channel you use. You should try different channels and see what works best for you after testing. So that would be like a more like test-based approach um, to whether you want to get a website or Facebook or both. Great. Yeah. So next question is on, just one last question on tool, two questions on tools. Um, Guang Yi Tang, the question is, what are the benefits of using Omni on WhatsApp? Does it help track the messages and maybe more? Well, I think this one you need to answer in terms of the uh, of Omni on WhatsApp. <laughs> So using Omni on WhatsApp is not um, as integrated or comprehensive as the official WhatsApp business. Um, the official WhatsApp business actually costs a lot of money and there are only like 20 something partners uh, around the world that offers that as a solution. And the charge is per message basis. So as an SME, we probably wouldn't be able to afford that. But using a landline number um, as your WhatsApp business number actually creates a lot of credibility. So I don't know if you've received any spam or scam WhatsApp messages from like gambling uh, sites uh, and those are very dodgy, right? And they are scammy and you don't want to have the same profile as this type of um, scam-based uh, companies. And so that would be to me like a, already a huge reason why you would pick to use a landline number on your WhatsApp in opposed to using a mobile number and gives a lot more credibility to your business um, when you're trying to speak to external customers. It doesn't help you track your messages. Um, 
honestly just a very professional front but i think that is a good enough reason on top of all the features that omni has to offer today just, just to add right, as you can see if you go into shopee lazada a lot of these online uh, you see a lot of vendors they use still they, a lot of them still use the mobile number right you still communicate to them using a mobile number uh, as opposed to having a more established landline or virtual landline where they can then communicate in terms of a uh, proper business communications when they're asking for say customer service and whatnot. So I think it is one of the few ways to look at how to adopt something like Omni for the business. Yep. Great. You're welcome, Guang Guan Yi. Okay, the yes. next question is just a follow-up um, to the platforms that we mentioned just now um, from Ashraf. Hello, with all the platforms that you mentioned, is it all based in Malaysia? I can take this. So all the tools that we use, um, they are not based in Malaysia. They are mostly based in the US, but our tools are based in Malaysia. So <laughs> Omni or HR, if you want to support local, especially right now during coronavirus, please use own local bread tools like ours, Omni or HRIP. Okay? I agree, yes. Correct. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Oh, running short on time. So let's see what I want to ask. Okay. Uh, one, one more on all HR, Sean, if you want to take that. If my company needs to keep one of our existing HR system, can all HR work with that existing system? Okay, good question. Uh, uh, we, we have been really open in terms of working with systems, anybody systems for that matter. So you, we just have to look at it on, on both sides. If the current HR uh, system that you're using um, is allowing us to integrate some manner of uh, information or taking some data out to basically implement into our system, then it's something that we can look at. But at most, from our experience, at most times, a lot of vendors don't really want to integrate because you're talking about two HR systems trying to talk to one another. And it could also look at as competitive uh, disadvantage to some. So again, it really depends on your relationship with the HR system and what you, you, you want to do with it. Uh, if it's those minor API plugins, I think it's fine. But it's very detailed integration, then we really need to sit down and have that discussion. Right? Yeah. Great. So it's a hello at all hr.my. You can address it to Sean, and Sean will answer your questions there if you did any integration work. Okay. Great. So the next few questions, the last couple of questions left are grant related. Uh, I can take them. Um, and then if Sean, if you have anything to add, feel free to add. So simple one to start um, from Sebi T54 for the grant. The company needs minimum or maximum number of employees. The answer there is no, there is no minimum, there's no maximum. So uh, as long as you meet the criteria, if you are like a one-man show, I mean, up to you. If you're a one-man show, you still want to use Omni because you have so many clients and you meet the the requirements then feel free to even if you're a 1000 man company you haven't started your digitalization journey you can also apply so just those four criteria no other additional ones yep. that's the grant criteria next one is if i've applied through june jc if i've applied through bsn and still waiting for approval can i submit another application with dg so the one of the criteria behind the application for the grant is that you shouldn't have already applied for the grant and try to apply for it again. Um, so if you have already applied, wait. If you were approved, then obviously you can't apply with us again. Um, if you have been rejected, um, and likelihood that if you submit the exact same application to us, uh, it will also be rejected. So um, make sure that you're qualified before you submit. Um, maybe if you are rejected because your documents were incomplete, then maybe you can get approval. But then if you're not qualified and that's why you're rejected, then we wouldn't be able to approve you as well. Yep. Yeah, so that is on approval. Um, next question is from Chris. Is the grant basically a variation of this SAG grant that already exists? So um, SAG, if uh, for the benefit of everyone, is the Smart Automation Grant. Um, so MDEC has a lot of grants. Uh, the Smart Automation Grant is one of them. Um, it's very different compared to the SME Digitalization Grant because the SME Digitalization Grant is uh, 5,000 ringgit, 50%. Um, and it's only from a list of pre-approved vendors and their pre-approved solutions. Yes. So today, I think there are like 100 or 200 approved TSPs if you want to apply through the normal process. If you apply through DG, it's only for our solutions. So our digital solutions as well as our connectivity solutions. You can find out more on the DG website. 
um, but different from the SAG because the SAG is like a project and uh, I think the amount can be up to 200,000 but you have to submit like a project to MDEC and there are two tracks, um, one you have to work with the um, bank and like another solution and one is you work together with the vendor to submit the project details. So it's different, um, I was probably a lot more straightforward, a lot more SME friendly and solutions are already there for you to pick instead of you trying to look for an uh, operational item in your company that you want to automate and get a vendor to automate that for you. But if you want to apply th for the SAG uh, through us uh, to do more things, uh, feel free to contact us. I'm sure we can come up with a lot of things to help you with automation for your operations or your external communications to clients. Yep. Great. I think that is that all? That's all the questions that we have for today. Lots mm -hmm. of questions. We've run over time by a minute, two minutes. But before we end, Sean, do you have any final um, comments that you'd like to make? Um, for like I said, it's, uh, it's in terms of uh, digitalization. Uh, again, the, the key focus today is that the key word over the next couple of uh, I think between half year to two years is going to be about how to get the right tools in place so you can work on in the new normal whether it's a communication tool whether it's a tracking tool whether it's a tool that can help your employees feel more engaged right it's something that you need to look at and it needs to be something that is also very easily accessible like on your mobile device on your tablet on your laptop so that speaks volumes in terms of uh, the need to digitalize. Right? And don't go about thinking that digitalization is going to cost you a lot of money unless you really need to buy everything from devices to software from scratch. Right? If you have tools today, you just need to add on. Add on the feature, try out a new tool, and then from there, I hope you guys begin your digitalization journey because it will be very, very rewarding right? in the end. Yeah. Great. So with that, um, we will end the webinar. Um, Right before that, if you have any more burning questions uh, for us, feel free to email us at hello at hr.my. Uh, we'll be happy to address any questions that you have about any tools or the grant there. We will have another grant-based webinar coming up soon, so stay tuned. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also follow our event right page in order to find out about our latest events. Um, before you leave, just another reminder, if you have not filled up the form, um, the link is posted in the description box as well as the chat. Please fill it up so that we can send you the materials after this and the materials contain some of the tools that we use at DGX um, that can help you with like, your internal operations, external communication and um, happier people. Um, our next webinar is coming up soon, so stay tuned to our webinars page on All HR website, YouTube page or our Eventbrite page. Um, if there is any burning topic that you'd like us to speak about at a webinar, uh, we'll be happy to organize that. So let us know what topics you'd like us to talk about as well. Thank you very much for staying with us until the end. We hope that you enjoyed watching this webinar as much as we enjoyed planning for it. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. See you soon.